Hey guys, we are back. And this is going to be an interesting video, and I'm curious to see your reaction. But I want to give you guys a heads up before we get started here. I am 100% a Nintendo fan. I have been my entire life. I love Nintendo, and in fact, this entire channel is dedicated to Nintendo. I do not hate Nintendo, but I am not going to be unrealistic in some of the things I say. And this channel is not a hype channel, and I'm not a bird feeder, basically. And what I mean by that is that I am not a guy who's going to make up things to falsely hype up a Nintendo product. Keep in mind, though, that I am cautiously optimistic about the Switch. Don't get me wrong on that. And towards the end of the video, I will go over some positive things that Nintendo can do with the Switch. And this is only referring to the case scenario when the rumored specs do, in fact, become true from Eurogamer and Digital Foundry. Now, for some reason, Eurogamer is 100% incorrect, which is not out of the realm of possibility, but they have been correct in everything that they have said so far on the Switch, and I'm not going to really, you know, argue against them at this point, but who knows, maybe the Switch in tablet form is as powerful as an Xbox One, you never know, but for the sake of this discussion, we will assume that what they are saying is basically correct, barring some unknown so far. Now, it has been confirmed that the Switch can run the API's OpenGL, and Vulkan, the latest versions of them. And also, it can run Unreal Engine 4. This is good news, right? This is very good news. However, it should be pointed out that those same APIs and that engine can run on smartphones, okay? Now, there is some kind of misconception that just because the Switch can run these APIs and this engine means that it will be extremely easy for developers to port all their games over to the Switch. This is not 100% true, and I'll explain why. Basically, when you think about game development, and I have talked to developers in the past, and they will agree with me, say they're developing a game for PC, for example, and you look on the box, it says minimum PC spec requirements on the box right there. So it says you need a certain spec CPU, a certain spec GPU, a certain amount of RAM in the system, all those things in order to run the game acceptably on your PC. So the same applies for developers. When they make a game, they have a certain spec that they're targeting. Now, if you have a PC that doesn't meet that minimum spec requirement, you're not gonna be able to run that game very well. You may be able to run the game, like I've tried it. I've bought games like Crisis, for example, and I tried getting it to run on a laptop. The system was way below the minimum spec requirements and it ran the game at five to eight frames per second. But you know, the game ran on it, <laughs> but it didn't run it well at all. It ran terrible. That is why developers have a spec requirement to develop their games for. It applies for consoles as well. So keep in mind that just because the Switch can run these APIs and run these engines and everything, it doesn't necessarily mean that the system is going to be powerful enough to run all the ports from PlayStation 4. Let's say, for example, they wanted to port Horizon Zero Dawn from the PlayStation 4 to the Nintendo Switch. You've seen how that game looks. It looks extremely demanding. But say it ran an engine like Unreal Engine 4, and that was just a heavily modified engine, and it ran on PlayStation 4 at high settings, gorgeous, all that good stuff. Now, they, when they tried to port that game to the Nintendo Switch, the game is not going to run, basically, at all, the way they intended it to. They will get the engine running on it, right? Unreal Engine 4, say it ran on that, which it doesn't. But say they get the engine running on it, basically with wireframes and no graphics. The engine will run, type of assets they want to run in that game will not function on the Nintendo Switch if it is running a Tegra X1. It will not be possible for them to do that without rewriting or remaking the assets from scratch. So you see where I'm getting at here? The porting aspect of the engine and the APIs is not the hard part. The hard part is getting the assets to look similar on a much lower powered system compared to what they're targeting originally. The PlayStation 4 is the target platform for all developers right now, but why? Because it is number one in the market. The same thing applies to the Nintendo Wii. Not the Wii U, but the Wii. Basically, the Wii could actually run Unreal Engine 3, but you never saw any games that actually used Unreal Engine 3 on the original Wii. And the reasoning was the same thing. The engine could get running on the system, but they would have to redo the effects, of course, turn off a lot of the effects, and redo effects that applied to the Wii's capabilities. What does that require? A lot of work, time, and more development costs, okay? 
Which is why the Nintendo Wii got a lot of its own exclusive games made by third-party developers because the system was selling at an incredible rate, it was a smash hit, so developers had to make their own version of their ports for the Nintendo Wii. They couldn't just port a game over from the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. They actually had to change levels in games and make them look differently completely or even play differently because the Wii wasn't able to render it at all. Could have been running the same engine, you know, but it wasn't having the same assets because it didn't have enough horsepower to run it. The same applies to a smartphone, the same applies for any device. You need a certain amount of horsepower to target in order to run games at an acceptable frame rate and to have similar looking details in the game, which is why developers shoot for target specs. So it's not simply a matter in all cases that developers can just simply put the game on low settings and call it a day. That's just simply not how it works. It comes to a point where even the low settings of a game's target would not be enough if the specs are still too low. It applies to a PC as well, right? You play a PC game and it's, you have the below system requirements needed for the lowest settings to run, that game is going to look like crap. <laughs> so there definitely has to be some kind of performance parity in order to run games at an acceptable frame rate and to look good enough, right? So getting back to the Switch and its so-called leaked specs from Eurogamer and Digital Foundry, if they do prove to be correct, the horsepower it outputs in portable mode, if you're comparing it to a home console, it's between 150 to 200 gigaflops in portable mode. And comparing that to a PlayStation 4 at 1.8 teraflops, there is no comparison. It's several, several, several times less powerful. So certain games that developers want to port, they're going to need to have their own assets made just for the Switch version, basically. They're going to need to have things done specifically for the Switch to get to look similar to take advantage of its own attributes. They won't be able to just port the PlayStation 4 version down to it. They of course will be able to port the engine and run the API, but as far as the assets are concerned, that amount of horsepower gap, they would have to change the textures, they would have to change the shaders, they would have to change it in a way to make it look good enough to look close to the PlayStation 4 version. If they try to just run the same thing on there, it would not run, basically. It's not powerful enough. It's as simple as that. And I know the CEO of NVIDIA himself said that it was such a great, amazing chip that the Nintendo Switch was running and everything. However, these specs, if they do become true, they're not amazing at all. Not for a home console, okay? For a home console, those specs are trash. They're garbage. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, but they are really terrible specs for a home console because they're basically a Wii U a little bit better than the Wii U. And for something coming out in 2017 that can't even come close to the PlayStation 4, for a home console, that is pathetic. It's terrible. That's a fact. Now, if you're looking at this system as a portable, now that is different. That is a good spec console because a portable that is that powerful is many, many, many times more powerful than the 3DS, for example. So I've had a lot of discussions with people offline and I've been reading the forums, seeing your comments. I see how disappointed some of you guys are in the comment section, by the way. I have noticed that. Now, what I've been discussing with people is that Nintendo, if this information is true from Eurogamer, Nintendo will need to do something with their marketing to switch, <laughs> to switch the marketing up to make the portable aspect the focus. Now, you can see that the rumored spec down clock to 307 megahertz, that would really help battery life. So I'm assuming, you know, we just heard recently that the battery life was actually around five to eight hours. I believe someone on NeoGAF posted that, that the rumored battery life has been increased to five to eight hours. Now, if this down clock is correct to 307 megahertz, that battery life could actually be correct, which would last up to eight hours for you in portable mode. So if Nintendo adjusted its marketing and put the Switch as a portable first, home console second, basically saying it's a portable home console. Instead of saying the home console that is also portable, they could just basically move that and say this is a portable that can connect to your TV and you can act like a home console. But mainly it's a portable with unique aspects of it with the Joy-Cons and having multiplayer locally. They could easily change the marketing of it, put the system at 199 and I think this system would do extremely well. But marketing a system with the specs of a Tegra X1 as a home console will send the wrong message, I think. And Nintendo has a good record with handhelds. With the 3DS, it has over 60 million consoles sold. 
So if they market this more like a handheld first with a home console aspect, I think the system could sell really well and it's a huge upgrade over the 3DS. Putting it as a home console, marketing as a home console, uh uh, I think it's a very bad move. So I think Nintendo needs to bite the bullet and just switch marketing up a little bit, focus on that portable aspect, and I think the system could be successful. Get all the developers from the 3DS on board, and you could have a really great lineup of games just like the 3DS does. And we know how great Nintendo supported the 3DS. It had some of the best games of this past generation. But getting back to the home console aspect of it, yes, we've heard developers say certain things. We've heard rumors of developers uh, possibly bringing high-class AAA games to the Switch. And I totally agree, that would be really cool. However, I'm not going to go against Eurogamer and Digital Foundry when they've been exactly correct on everything up to this point, and they got the PlayStation 4 Pro specs dead on correct as well. They nailed it. So they got exact clock speeds here. More than likely, just prepare yourself guys that these specs are correct, and it is based on a Tegra X1, it is 256 CUDA cores, and it is underclocked below a Tegra X1. Be my guest if you want to hope that it has more CUDA cores or it's more powerful, or since because it has a fan that means something else, you can hope in that all you want. However, from what we got so far, even though it's just a rumor for now, and it could be 100% wrong, and they've gotten everything right up to this point. But like I said, if you change the marketing of this thing, targeted at the handheld portable aspect of it, and Nintendo does very well with portables, put it at a 199 price point and you got a winner. I guarantee you, you got a really good system right there and a lot of people will buy it. Probably not the dedicated home console fans will buy it, but you know Nintendo, they're always working on something. So in 2017 or, or later in the future, we never know what else we might see from Nintendo. But for now, I think the best way to market this system would be to adjust that marketing just enough and target it just enough. Because guess what? Microsoft just last week was selling the Xbox One S Minecraft Edition for $225. Granted, it was just for one day, but PS4 and Xbox One right now for the holidays are on sale for $250 with a game. PS4 is with three games. So if Nintendo sells the Switch as a home console for 250 bucks, and it's based on a Tegra X1, actually below a Tegra X1, it simply is not going to have the pull as a portable would. If they just focus on the portable aspect of it, put it at 199, I think it would be extremely successful. And then yeah, we'll see what games it does get, and I'm definitely excited to see that. Who wouldn't want to play a portable Skyrim or Dark Souls, you know, who wouldn't want to play that? Just keep your expectations in check. Don't be expecting anything near an Xbox One level of graphics. Expect Wii U level and above, but not Xbox One. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said before in my other video, there's nothing wrong with having a low spec system as long as you know what you're getting, right? So it's up to Nintendo to market the thing correctly, to let the fans know what exactly they're gonna be getting with the Switch. Because it's kinda hard to see with a Tegra X1 processor, if that is rumored to be correct, it's kind of hard to see what exactly they're trying to go for because the Tegra X1 is a mobile processor. It's from 2015 and that chip itself is not a success. It was used in some cell phones and many companies stopped using it. So we're kind of in a weird spot right now with the Switch. We got these very credible rumors coming out, which are never going to be confirmed by Nintendo, by the way. And we got January 12th to see what this thing can do. But for me personally, I'm going to focus my attention on the portable aspect of the Switch. I'm not going to even worry about the home console aspect of it right now. Just for the sake of not getting my hopes up, not being disappointed. So basically, the word of caution is don't get your hopes up for it being close to Xbox One level in performance. Because so far, it's not looking like it's going to be. And like I said before, I'm a Nintendo fan. I always will be. This channel's focused on Nintendo and I want them to be successful. I think that's how they can do it, guys. They can be successful if they refocus the Switch to be a portable first, home console aspect second. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section, of course. I'll discuss it with you. Let's be polite to one another. <laughs> you might be upset, who knows? But hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care.